Well, praise God. I'm here because of uh, all the staff here really praying and believing for me and challenging me. There was one time when uh, Kelly left a prayer for me on my voicemail. I must have played that thing 15, 20 times. Right on. There, there's power when people come together. And I looked at things in the natural. And I looked at the house of healing. I said, oh, man, I respect Brother Mike. But, man, having a ministry like that, in my mind, I said, I got a little bit bigger ex expectations for my future. Not understanding that this was it. I had a chance to meet with Michael. See, that's, that's what we're doing guy that gave that testimony he he was on his road to die and go to hell and the devil kept trying to kill him and rehab couldn't fix him and then churches wouldn't have known what to do with him yeah. they would have been confused they'd give you like a 10 they give you like a 10 day to 10 week window to fix yourself then they got to move on yeah. see the power of jesus is real but most people don't know how to press in and really get it. They don't know how to, to walk in it. To walk in it, oh, to walk in it, you got to purify yourself. Come on. Preach. you got to purify yourself. If you won't, that stuff that's in you is going to rise up. And it's going to fight you. And it's going to fight you from within. And therefore, it's got the edge on you. And its goal is to bring you back to where you came from. And if they ain't comfortable with taking you just there, they'll, they'll try to take you all the way out. And so we're trying to help somebody, and that's what your money's going for, to help somebody. Sometimes you need to calculate. I know it looks good when the pastor sees you and you smile. Hello, pastor, and he knows how much money you gave, and you're building the West Wing for the children's uh, little conference center to play foosball. But sometimes you need to invest where you can get somebody saved. Well, we don't have a 10 pastor uh, staff that's all on, all on salary. Right now. We walk by faith. Come on, preach. We're not going to take your money and spend it in my gas tank. I'm not going to Chipotle on your dime. <laughs> so I want to talk about coming out. Of, of the world physically and emotionally. We're going to look at some scriptures and see what happens. See, you got to look at the devil and you got to be able to see him move. But if you look back to your past life, it's hard to see him move. You just see these, these big screw ups. You see these big divorces and bankruptcies and job losses and mental breakdowns and affairs. You see these big things, but you got to be able to see clearly how he set each one of those things up. If you ever, ever watched somebody play the Ouija board, it's real subtle. And uh, you put your hands on there, and each person goes, hey, are, are you moving this? Nah, man, are you moving this? And there's, a, there's an element of doubt. The devil's a masterful deceiver. He doesn't, want you to know, he doesn't want you to know he's moving you around. He's controlling you. He's putting people in your life. He's putting things inside you. He doesn't want you to know that the Bible is real, that he comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. And you give him a little place, that's all he's looking for. He's going to take that little place and he's going to make that a big place. Then next thing you know, you start seeing yourself back into relationships. Oh, you want to be loved. Oh, you need a woman. You need a man now. And you're not looking with biblical eyes. And hell comes to breakfast. Uh -huh. hey. See, men are trained. Look, everybody got a porno magazine when he was a teen. Everybody but two people that I knew personally. I believe Andrew Womack's the third. <laughs> but everybody else, <laughs> they picked up porn. Yeah. You see the glory of what God created. It's pretty fascinating. Then these little scoundrels that you grow up with teach you how to put your hands on these women. And so you learn how to be whatever you need to be. I mean, I, I said no to dancing, break dancing, any kind of dance. But hey, you go to the club, this is what's required. You better learn at least two or three moves because this is how we're serenading women into premarital sex here at the nightclub. 
with this demonic beat, this little frenzy of alcohol, this emotion. And uh, so you get in these relationships with people that aren't transformed. They're not, they haven't renewed their mind. They haven't been delivered. The devil lies to you because he's been lying to you for so long and you've been putting it up, up with it for your whole life. You say, oh, I'm going to change him. Oh, it's going to be different this time. He really wants to change. That devil, is, he's smart. You better learn what it's like to be alone. You better learn what it's like to know God and have God give you a gift. You better know how it is to see a window opening and a window closing. Come on. You better learn how to run. It's, a, it's, it's sad sometimes to sit in that office and you listen to people and how the devil just beat them down, beat them down, beat them down. And there gets to be a point where truth is given to you and you're so beaten down, you can't even reach out for it. The simplicity of Christ seems as foolishness. Oh, it's too easy. I got to do this. I got to do that. No, you need to learn how to come as you are and to receive the mercy of God. Deliverance is the mercy of God. It's not done by might. It's not done by strength. It's done by the spirit of almighty God. And he'll set you free. But he's not going to set you free from anything you don't want to be set free from. Because it would be foolish. You'd be set free by Brother Fran Francis on Thursday. And you'd be coming back here on Friday looking for me to help you out. you got to learn how to shut the doors to the devil. If you can't shut the doors on the devil, he's coming. He don't stop. I finally just sold this business. This thing has been a thorn in my shoe every time i get a letter every time i get an email it's like a sharp rock too oh man just here it is again we finally sold the business imagine this it's a six-month closing i mean you gotta show documents upon documents and records upon records and maintenance on the vehicles and our biggest most expensive truck it's a big rig diesel the day we sign blows up I mean, this is like a four-hour window into the next day, and it's off the books. We gave you a good deal. We've given you hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of stuff for half the price. It comes on our dime the day we close. I just looked at it. I said, hey, I got to trust in God's word. I said, hey, you got all my needs. I'm putting you first. I would like to add a little extra money. I could do some things with that money. I could do some good things with that money. But, Lord, you're in control. You got to take some things and you got to learn how to take it. Yeah, the, these curses, we talked about curses last week. Curses get their place by you. Someone speaks them into existence. The minute you become a Christian and you see the pattern, it's up to you to break that curse by the authority you've been given in Luke 10 19. And the only way it doesn't get broken is because you keep listening to it, because it's ingrained into your mind. Oh, I knew this was going to happen. I used to say that. So, oh, I knew it would happen. I don't say that anymore. I do not say that anymore. I kept my mouth shut and I took it. This verse, ooh, it was powerful last week. Ecclesiastes 10 and 20. Do not curse the king, even in your thought. Do not curse the rich, even in your bedroom. For a bird of the air may carry your voice, and the bird in flight may tell the matter. Demons, they got a little... Uh, system of recording what you're saying and accusing you night and day before the father according to what the word of god yeah. you violate the word of god hell's coming to breakfast That's right. yeah, there's grace there's a window of opportunity to change but when you keep doing the same thing it's coming we live in the middle of this we will tell you testimony upon testimony of people who don't change at one point he can take your mind at one point, he can take your mind. We've seen it. The good news is you're here today. You got in your own car and no one drug you here today. You're in a position to receive a blessing. Yes. You're, in the, you're in a position to be delivered. Preach, preach, preach. 
When you're operating on free will, we know you got a chance. We talked about in the uh, seminar Mike did on Saturday, people want to get in the deliverance ministry. There's a little opportunity to come and pray for people here. And it's one thing to cast out demons in a house of prayer, a house of sacrifice, a house of labor, something Mike started over a decade ago. But then you get your opportunity to deliver somebody that just, it's just you and them come on. and your faith. That's it. And so I got that opportunity and I was so happy to have demons coming out. I was so happy. <laughs> It was great because I was going to the jail and I came in there bold as a lion. I'm ripping these devils out. Come out now. I was doing everything I was taught here. We sat like this. Yeah. If there's any devils here, they should come out. I tried to call Mike. I said, Mike, I know they kicked you out of the jail for kicking out demons. Let, let me get your social security number and see if they'll let you back in. It's been a few years. <laughs> You got to help me out down here. And so I finally had my breakthrough. And I had a little bit of ignorance with it too. Just a little bit, not much. And I told my pastor. I said, yeah, you've been working with Omar. He told me, he said, man, I, I met this guy in jail. Then I met him at the new church I began to go to. And he said, yeah, I know Omar. I've had to get him out of drug houses. I've had to do this. I've had to go find him here. I've had to keep his bills afloat. I kept his car on the road. And I said, well... Just sit back and watch a little bit. I've introduced him to deliverance. You're going to see how this goes. This is going to speed up the process quite rapidly. <laughs> Found myself in hospitals, praying him through. Found myself in dope houses. Found myself pleading with him. Man. What makes deliverance easy is a willing participant. Come on. Yeah. But most people don't want to let go. They like them, them, They like this world. Yes. Like you love your 401k. You've had dreams. They've been instilled with you since you were a little child. You watch TV. The television, it's been telling you your vision for years. Yeah. Now you compare your television with the word of God, and you want to keep some of that television. <laughs> Come on, man. Preach. You want this money. You want, you want people to respect you. How dare someone come against me? I've been working at this job for 17 years. They are now spreading gossip behind my back and stirring up enemies against me. I'm a child of... Come on now. You got to turn off the television preachers. They've been telling you a vision that's not real. In this world, you're going to have tribulations. He said, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. I have a place for you. And you can be a doorkeeper in heaven. You can get in barely escaping the flames of hell. Or you can have a mansion. Come on, man. But in order to have a mansion, you're going to have to be a servant. That's it. Come on now. He says, now I say that an heir in Galatians 4, 1 through 7, he says, as long as he is a child, he does not differ from a slave. Though he is the master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the appointed by the father, time of the father. Even so we... When we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive an adoption as sons. And because you were sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his sons into our heart, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. If you're going to go into this, yeah, I'm an heir, but my kingdom's not on this earth. You learn that from the television preacher. You learn that from your pastor because he's got a 401k with your tithes and offerings. He's got himself a nice house. It's nicer than yours. He's got a nicer car. It's nicer than yours. How do I know? Because we looked at 15 churches before we bought this one. And when we would go look at the churches, we could figure out the most prominent spot and the nicest car was always the pastor's. Oh, it was so bad, this guy had a $100,000 car, and I swore they must have had cat Bible studies. It was cat hair accumulated on the seats in dust. I said, what, how in the world do you accumulate this kind of filth on seats? But he had a nice car, and it was shining. <laughs> this devil makes a mockery of the Word of God. Word of God, man, you sign up, you are a slave to serve God. 
but I know I'm an heir. And in my father's house are many mansions. I plan on getting at least like a nice duplex. <laughs> I might not get the mansion. I'm going to get something with, you know, a little bit of amenities. I got to serve him here. I got to serve him here. So do you. You got to overcome these lies in your mind. The devil lying in your mind constantly. And then you get over the lies in your own mind and you start to have some success. And now you start seeing the devil move in people. Oh, he'll move in people like you can't believe. I've seen him. I've seen him take whole congregations in the jails of men who were loving God, getting delivered, moving of the spirit. Then someone comes with another doctrine, just like what Paul dealt with. Oh, no, you can't have no Christian or no Christian can have no demon. Oh, no. This is the when they start rattling the Bible. Blah, 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 blah. And next thing you know, like, where's everybody else? Oh, man, they're with Brother Harold. They bought into that doctrine. But, you know, that doctrine doesn't last long. That doctrine doesn't last long. Oh, no, you're going to need the Holy Ghost. You're going to need the moving of the Holy Spirit. You're going to need to bind these devils and cast them out. Come on. Saw one guy, for example. I'll just use one example. This guy had all kinds of money. Rich guy. Got caught up in a case. I read the case. I mean, he told me about it. I normally try not to get in their cases, but he was a smart guy. I find him interesting. I let him tell his stories and. He owned multiple properties in nice neighborhoods, had a great job, was to the point of retirement, catches a case. I looked at the case. I said, yeah, that's, that's wrong. You need to go to jail for a little while, you know, but you're not an outright, you know, dangerous person. And he's getting some moving of the spirit. God's touching him. But he always wants to hear something that makes him feel good. Hey, what do you think about my sentence? Do you think I'm going to have favor in my sentence? Do you think I'm going to be blessed? Do you think I'm going to be released from here early? And I wouldn't tell him yes. So he kept going to these other preachers that would tell him, I believe I see God blessing you and letting you out of here. And so he walks away from deliverance. He had a 10-year plea bargain, rejects it. Comes back and said, I'll take the 10. They said, it's 20 now. He said, I can't do that. He fought it in court. By the time he goes to court, he goes through deliverance. He said, I'm not going to bring that victim out here and embarrass her. I'm not going to do it. And he got life in prison. He's going to die in Florence. Why? Because he wanted the gospel to conform to what he wanted. He didn't want to walk by faith. He wanted someone to give him a sign, to give him a word that he would know he was secure. I need to know it. Look, you need to know the word of God. God will never leave you, never forsake you. He promises to finish the good work that he began in you. He's going to finish it. He's not going to leave you half delivered, but there are some things that you got to be want to be delivered from. God was delivering me. I didn't go to a church. My church didn't believe in deliverance. I'm going through deliverance. But I didn't tell people in church stuff because the first book I ever read in my, my life, I got 132 college credits. That's enough for a degree in something. And I had never read one book in my life. Not one book. I wasn't reading stuff on the computer either. There was no computers. There's no internet. And I started reading the Bible and I'm amazed by it. And I go to church and I go, wow, this is not like the Bible. Come on. <laughs> I said, this is kind of a trip. And I was a hustler. I was a ticket scalper. So you got to be a, come on, man. You got to fight each other in that world. And that's a strong survive in that world. And, and I would look at it and I would say, wow, you know, you know, what is this? This is really confusing. And then I thought, well, you know, I guess we're just all sinners and we're just doing the best we can. I guess this is the best they can come up with. Until one day they, were, they had the Jesus videos. I don't know if anybody remembers that. They had these eight-track tapes. And you would go around and you'd knock on your neighbor's door and say, hey, I'd like to share this video with you. I'd like to give it to you and I'd like to follow up with you and see what you thought about this video after you get a chance to, to view it. 
that was a national thing going on. Our church was a part of it. And I showed up to do that. And it was a big church, medium mega church. And uh, sure enough, the pastor's sitting right next to me. And I'm preparing the whole time. I'm all excited, like, wow, I finally get to meet this guy. This is going to be exciting. And I'm thinking, well, what am I going to say? And, and how am I going to say it? And the guy never even looks at me in an hour and a half and says one word. I said, well, man, I don't know about this. I said, man, I don't know about this. I think this thing might just be bad from the top to the bottom. I was unaware that the, the devil had power over the Christians until I saw that church. And so I would go to church, and by the grace of God, uh, I heard of some moving of the Spirit. My wife showed up at this church by, this, by a little strip mall not far from my house, and I wasn't in town. She goes, I don't know if you'd like it. Everybody wants to shake your hand and wants to know you. They stand up. They really <laughs> praise God. And I said, well, man, hey, I wanted to shake somebody's hand. I wanted to know somebody. I'm new in this world. I got saved buy another ticket scalper. He's going to be here a little bit later. <laughs> His name's Steve. <laughs> we didn't have a lot of biblical fellowship. That was the only Christian I knew. That's good. Come on. <laughs> and so I went to that church. Sure enough, there was some moving of the Spirit. I said, wow, I felt God there. I felt that. But as I'm going through deliverance, I learned real fast you don't need to be telling church people too much. I saw that visually. I, 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 whenever I sit down at a restaurant, I'm always sitting like at a certain place. People always accuse me of being a cop. You a cop, sir? No, I'm not a cop. <laughs> but I always have this thing. I got to kind of see what's going on. I kind of just watch people and things. I find it entertaining. Better than people on TV. That, that's a false reality. I like the real reality. And I'm going through this deliverance. But one of the last things to go was weed. And I was hearing truth. And Brother Steve wasn't quite as anointed preacher back then. And he'd come pretty hard. What are you doing, man? You're going to pick up demons. I'm like, bro, take it easy picking up demons. Why don't you just pick them up? Yeah, it was just mean, pick up demons. And he said, matter of fact, you got a demon on your bomb. I looked at it. I said, man, sure enough, that is a demon. I walked right out. I threw my bong in the trash. Hallelujah. Bless God. But I kept my weed in my back pocket. I wasn't that fast at picking up truth. So it wasn't until I got confronted with someone that was sharing the word of God saying, we're supposed to do something. We're supposed to do something. And he says, man, there's a Holy Spirit power. You fire up those engines and you fan that flame and you stir up that faith and you go out and you love somebody. You love somebody that's unlovable. So my ministry always was, I never went for pretty people. I knew pretty people got what they want. In my church, because they don't know about deliverance, the only way you can rise up is if you're a good-looking person, above average, and you got a nice business. You can handle your family, a business. You've shown yourself to be able to run this world's goods. And you look the part, they could raise you up. They didn't look for the anointing of God. They looked for things that passed the eye test. They didn't, they didn't trust in the Holy Spirit gifts to be poured out into men. I believe that's how the church was started. But as it was growing, they took it into the hands of themselves. The majority of those preachers don't preach anymore. They faded out. They went back to the world. They went back to building houses. One of them, I see him on Facebook. Another guy took early retirement. The devil had thrown some kind of heart attack into, a, into him, and he was suffering with all kinds of problems. The other one catches fibromyalgia. He believes that it's a thorn in his flesh sent from God. Wow. This was a re that guy was a real deal preacher. He was the real deal. He loved God. He had set up three or four churches. He was a good man of God but didn't understand the devil. So I'm watching all this. I don't want to tell them my problems. You know, they can already see I got some problems. I'm walking by faith. I'm a hot dog vendor. I came out from hustling. All my friends became millionaires hustling tickets. Right at the point, it was so easy. If I described it, you wouldn't believe the money you could make back in the day. Now it's hard. 
It's tough. You got to get out there and grind. But this was before the internet. The whole market was out on the street. No one knew how to buy these tickets. How you could buy them by the dozens, by the hundreds, group sales. You want to fight in line with everyone? I'm trying to get four for the Bulls. You could just call up group sales. I'll take a hundred. You had to do it three months earlier and pay cash, but it was easy. Now I'm walking by faith. I don't know what to do. I got no education. I wanted to take it into my hands. I wanted to be rich. I, bro I was broke two times. I lost some big money in businesses. And I said, well, these, I, I'd hung out at hot dog carts at ball games. I said, they can make some money. Hey, bank one ballpark starting. Hey, I'll go down there and sell water and hot dogs. I was the first guy to go down there with water, peanuts, and hot dogs. Everybody else had hot dogs and sodas. I knew you got to have some coolers of water. You got to have, you got to have boxes of peanuts. And, and the reality was, I, they looked down at that. They were always trying to help me. Oh, Rick, we think we got something better for you. Lloyd is a real estate broker. We think with your skills, we could, you could be a real estate broker. And I, I would try to buy into their visions. Oh, I can see how that's good. But God had put me into a position to love the unlovable. To love the unlovable and to watch the Spirit of God move on somebody. And some, so many people have this hard casing. Oh, you're going to run into their lies. You're going to run into their addictions. You're going to run into their schemes. But if you can keep loving them, there'll be a day when you get a window into that person, to his heart. And once you can get to that place, you'll have success. But you can't get there if they don't trust you. And most of you, your friends don't trust you because they see your up and downs. You're loving, you're, you're, uh, you're down, you're confused, you're lonely, you're mad at people, you're frustrated. These are spirits working against you. They don't want you advancing in the kingdom of God. They don't want you winning souls. They don't want you growing in the knowledge of God, understanding of the moving of the spirit. So they attack your emotions. So when you come out, you got to come out physically and you got to come out emotionally. That's the only way it's going to work. And let us not grow weary at the end of Galatians 6 and 9. It says, let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Why aren't you going to, you're going to reap if you purify yourself, if you cleanse yourself. You're going to reap a reward. I've seen people saved that I had literally thought, man, this guy's crossed the line. He's at the point of no return. In my mind, I was basically just going through the emotions, you know, going through the motions rather, because I had emotionally given up on the guy because it took so long to see him saved. But at the end, he said, look, man, I've been watching you. I've been watching you when he finally gets saved. He said, I know that's God in your life. I see what he's given you and I see the joy you have. And that's what I want. See, they want a Jesus they can see. They, got it. they want a Jesus that they can that they can experience. People are always running from religion. Religion has scarred everybody. A religion you just got to tell me about. A religion that you just got to tell me what to do to make him happy. People aren't interested in that. But they're interested in a comforter. A savior. A deliverer. A healer. Amen. They're interested. That's what drew me. That's what drew me. Is men who had the anointing of God. Yes. They had this peace. And I looked at him, I said, man, how are you so happy? Your house is medium, medium house. You got an American car. How are you happy? You got, a, you got a little church. You don't have a great big church. You got a little church. And these evangelists would come into town. I said, wow, you, I know you're not getting paid here. This has got to be a low-paying gig. Airfare, sleeping at the past, in the pastor's house eating the pastor's wife's food. You're not even going out to dinner until the last night. I know how this works. My wife is, this is her father's church. I've seen them come and go. But they always had this peace. And I looked at them. I said, wow, man, all my friends, we don't have peace unless we're making money. We don't have peace and joy unless we're bragging about something sinful. Unless we're taking glory in the things we have. Because we never wanted to be average. Oh, I can't be average. i got to be above average. When I drive down the street, I, I, I can't have just stock rims. i got to have some nice rims. 
As a matter of fact, the guy I bought my first rims, he, he's got a reality TV show now. He's on the Real Housewives of Orange County. He's ro rose into the top of garbage. <laughs> the pinnacle. Things. And so these things, the devil's going to test where you really, if you really love God, because some of these things are going to be taken from you. Some of these things you're not going to be able to afford sometimes when you're walking through stuff. To see if you really love God, if you really want the anointing of God, it's going to cost you something. Come yeah. on, preach. God says in 2 Corinthians 6, 17, he says, therefore come out from among them and be separate. Says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. Man, the the church isn't much different from the world. You find a good person that's not going to jail, has one wife, doesn't do drugs. He's not much different from Christians. You know, according to, I don't know if it's a Zogby poll, a Gallup poll, 90% of the church doesn't even do any work in America. 90% don't serve in the church in any capacity. Or tie, that's in there too. I wasn't going to hit them with the double whammy. Thank you, sir. And they don't give any money. Number two, 90%. So when he says you got to come out from among them, why? Because if you don't, it says the tares, they look the same. They just don't produce. They're non-producers. There's times you got to leave non-producers. I'm not telling you can't help them. You want to help them, the best way you're going to help them is show them a sanctified, set-free life filled full of joy. But if they're not going where you're going, man, you got to make, you got to separate yourself. That's right. Come on. You got to separate yourself. My, my, my son, he's 17. He gets caught up in the social media. I don't do social media. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use it as a weapon one day. <laughs> but right now, I'm staying away from it because it's a weapon always trying to get me. So I just stay away from it. But my son is on there. And on Wednesday, he goes and he wrestles. Uh, and they, they face their in-town rivals, two high school rivals. And he ends up getting this kid. And, man, it's a great pin. Takes him right from the top, right onto his back. And, you know, you got to roll around on the guy a little while to pin him. And it's not real pretty. They're heavyweights. There's a lot of fat moving around. And it is not the most appealing thing to the eye. And he puts it on. Someone puts it on a video. And some kid chirps in there, oh, man, you guys look like you're gay. And my son gets all lit up. And I said, look, you, you got to have some eyes to see. I said, look who's telling you that he's never tasted victory. Man, when that, when that referee raised his hand, and he's a heavyweight, so that's the last match of the night. So it's not only applaud for that win, but it's the close. They won the tournament uh, or the duel, and so they're all clapping. And he's so happy, and they, they raise your hand to this side of the crowd and the other. And I said, that guy didn't like something inside him, didn't like you having joy for your hard work. Because wrestling isn't like a lot of glory. Everybody loves football players. Man, you, you, everybody shows up to those. Wrestling matches, man, it's your family. Maybe a couple of friends will come see you once a year. I mean, you put in a whole lot of work for a little bit of glory, and you worked hard for that. That devil didn't like you celebrating and enjoying what your hard work is, has paid off. And I said, now you're in this battle fighting this guy online for everybody to see. I said, you got to have eyes to see what's going on. That devil doesn't like you to have any success. He'll, he'll come and try to steal anything he can get his little hands in there. And he's working. He don't stop. He don't sleep. This, this is a war. That's why the Bible says the war, a good warfare. If you're on one-on-one -on -one combat, now I've seen some guys take some, some time off. You football, you get tired. I did it. I take a couple plays off, catch my win. You act like you're doing something. You know, you'll just hold the guy up. I was a defensive lineman, and you'll think you were playing the run, but you're just too lazy to run down the field. You catch your breath. Try that in wrestling. Try that in, in, foot, in boxing. Yeah. You're going to get knocked out. Yeah. Sure. And, and, and the Bible says, he compares it to wrestling. We're not wrestling against people here. We're wrestling against this demonic 
powers, principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness, spiritual hosts of wickedness. You're wrestling them, but when they get an advantage of you, don't let the devil take advantage of us. Be not unwise to the devices of the devil. He sends the demons. Doesn't say we're wrestling against demons. The demons got sent by this highly orchestrated plan of attack of human beings. And let's look at the success. I mean, everybody, when they look at the Chicago Bulls, six championships in whatever years, and two three-peats, and man, this was an unstoppable dynasty. Look at this devil. How many people he takes to hell. 90% of the church doing nothing. Do you think 90% of that church doesn't want to do anything? No, I don't. I believe that majority of those people do want to do something. I know there's people that just go there. I know people that go to church to find good women. And they corrupt them. I know a guy that's been doing it for years. 25 years. I know there's some people that come there just to do business dealing. And to have a network. Uh... To, to profit off of, but I believe that the majority of that 90% want to do something. But there's the devil and his plan of attack against you so that you don't bear fruit for the kingdom of God. And he sent them demons. Those demons, most of the time, they came into you from your family. Sins of the fathers are passed down to the children to the third and fourth generation. You got mom's demons. You got dad's demons. You're angry like dad. You watch porn like dad. You're frustrated. You blame everybody like mom. I mean, this comes right down the line. That's right. That's right. <laughs> then them demons will come into you when you're a kid. And most of it's rejection. Because we're all born into sin. It says death came into the world through one man, Adam. Therefore, death reigned in all men. I only knew a few guys, and that's who I tried to emulate. It seemed to me like they had no insecurities and no fears. The world was in their hand. They got the best women. They were the best athletes. They were the best-looking guys. There was a few of those people. They were dealing probably with just pride and arrogance and self-sufficiency, but everybody else that wasn't perfect, like you and me, you got this little sense of rejection when you were a kid because you didn't fit in perfect. You weren't the funniest guy. You weren't the best looking guy. Hey, that was kind of a rule, man. You, you don't go dogging the best looking guy. You got to give respect to him. He's got the pretty girls. He's hands off. Everybody else, fair game. It was kind of a weird thing. I didn't always obey by those rules, but for the most part, I did. And this rejection is real. Pick it up at home. If your dad was abusive, was a cursor, was a yeller, you picked it up quick. You didn't have a father. Oh, you picked it up by the time you were five for sure. 100% you got it. That devil showed you, I, I don't know how many hundreds of people I counseled in the jails. I always saw everyone's birthday party. The things I remember was always someone else's dad playing ball with them. I always saw someone else's house who had a mom and a dad, and yet the things we didn't have, I correlated because I didn't have a dad. Oh, that devil's smart. Most of the stuff you're dealing with came in when you were little. You're just now trying to get deliverance from the manifestation what's deep down inside you. Most people, they got lust so bad, lust just, in, it just completely covers them. All they can lust, porn, things, chicks, body parts. They never can even get to the point, hey, you felt rejected. That's how you picked up that lust demon. Mental illness, man, you just, thoughts ran through your head ever since you were a little kid. Negative thoughts, over, over, over again. Some were lies, after a while you, you quit dishing out the lies, you just start receiving everything. All these mental illness demons, they're nothing to be played with. They're nothing to be played with. By the time that stuff goes to full-blown full schizophrenia, and you're getting a check from the state, Them devils have got legions of demons covering the real control demons. Legions, thousands upon thousands of demons. I promise you thousands upon thousands of demons. You'll be hacking and coughing for years. You can be set free. We, we know a guy that used to preach on this very pulpit right here for years. And he's, jail, he's the jail minister. He's traveling to churches. 
He had full-blown schizophrenia. He went to the insane asylum. He was in there preaching one day. And he said, he said, yeah, when I was, when they took me in, I thought they were going to sit me on my throne as God. And I said, bro, you can't tell these inmates that story. I, I said, I know that's your testimony, but we got to ease back a little bit. And they got to see some moving of the spirit before you drop that one on them. House of Healing, hey, you're coming with some credibility. They know Kelly. They know Mike. They, they see the rest of the staff. Do your thing there, but not here. We're going to have to slow play that one. So you can be delivered from what you want to be delivered from. Do most people want to be delivered from themselves? Sometimes it takes a breaking. Everything you held dear is taken away from you. Your money, your spouse, your children, your career. Sometimes your health. Then you realize. Here's what God says to Abraham in Genesis he says, now the Lord said to Abraham, get out of your country and from your family, from your father's house to a land I will show you and I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing and I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And what does Abraham do? He brings Lot. Some people you can't bring with you. Lot was a carnal person. Lot cost him a whole lot of trouble. The nation of Israel had to face those demons that came in through Lot for years. And even going through the promised land, they're hindered by these people, these demons. He was carnal. He was always operating by his sight. Lot was, Lot was always wanting to be by the city. I, I know the city's safe. Hey, I don't want to be up in these mountains. Someone could kill me up there. And he's prospering with, with Abraham. He's prospering. And he's got all his flocks are multiplying because the favor of God is on him. Gets to the point where there's beef now between Abraham's herdsmen and Lot's herdsmen. And he says, I'll tell you what. You choose. You go left, I'll go right. You go right, I'll go left. And he looks down by Sodom and Gomorrah and he sees the water and he goes, I'll go that way. Operating by his sight. What happens? Oh, man. This is terrible. Genesis 19. God's about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But he's going to save Lot and his family. It says, now the angels came to Sodom and Gomorrah in the evening and Lot was sitting at the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself and his face towards the ground. And he said, Here now, my lords, please turn into your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise early and go on your way. But they said, No, we must spend the night in the square. So he insists. He brings them to his house. And before they lay down, the men of the city and the men of Sodom, both young and old, Young and old sinners, man. Old sinners look bad. They look bad. When your health, your vitality is taken away. I go over to this grocery store over here. What's it called? Whole Foods. There's always these older homosexual couples coming in there. And they're, they look like they're 65. They're probably in their mid-50s. Their health is bad. And they look skinny. And they look like... The devil is just eating them from the inside out. And they're holding their hand. Oh it's, a, it's, oh, it's a bad look. It's a bad look to be an old sinner. I remember when I was smoking weed, you'd run across some old sinners. I'm like, dude, you're trying to score a bag and you're 50 and 60 years old? What's wrong with you? Don't you know we're supposed to give this up when you get older? I was under the delusion I was going to quit. How come you didn't quit? This looks bad. Gray hair. You want to use my bong? What's wrong with you? Both old and young show up. All the people from every quarter. They surround the house. They call Lot to them. Where are those men that came to you tonight? Bring them out that we may know them carnally. Can you imagine the lust demons? People say, oh, how could God destroy the world? 
How could he do that? I don't believe in that fairy tale. Why would a sovereign God, an almighty God, destroy all these people and just save no one? I can't believe this. The Bible says that every thought that they had was only evil. They were overrun with demons. They were so loaded with demons. Everything they spoke was demonic. Everything they thought was demonic. Everything they wanted was demonic. And God had to wipe them out and start over. These men are so lustful. They want to know these men. They want to rape these men. Lot goes out of the doorway, shut the door behind him and said, please, my brethren, do not do so wickedly. Now I have these two daughters and they have not known a man. That was a lie. They had husbands. He was lying. Please, let me bring them out to you. You may do what you wish and do nothing to these men. That's how Lot is so corrupted. He has no faith in God. God sends messengers. God's about to burn the city of Sodom and Gomorrah and he can't save these men. He can't save you. He has zero faith. Then the angels come out and said, stand back. And they said, this one came uh, in to stay here and he keeps acting as a judge. Okay, here's the, here's the angels. But when they reached out their hands, they pulled Lot into the house, they shut the door and they struck the men who were in the doorway with blindness, both small and great. And so they became weary trying to find the door. They're blind and still trying to find the door. Can you imagine how demonic these people were man the minute I get cast with blindness at any stage of my sinfulness I'm stopping whatever I'm doing I mean I'm done at this point I'm, I'm throwing up the hands I'm taking a little uh, account of what went wrong gonna make some adjustments see how I might be able to get my sight back not these men they're clawing at the door Till they grew weary, they couldn't find the doorknob. They're in confusion. They're they're feeling grabbing over each other. They go home. This blindness. This is what the devil does. That's what he's doing to people. So, Lot goes in, and he says, "Hey, take your whole family." Tries to get his his daughters, his son-in-laws, and it says they seem. As though Lot was joking. They thought it was a joke. How many people are you preaching to and sharing the word of God, talking about deliverance, and they think it's a joke? They think it's a joke. Oh, Christians can't have demons. Well, if you can't eat off the table of the Lord, which is deliverance is the children's bread, you've been massively deceived. If a Christian can't have demons... How does a demon come out of a man and be sent to dry places? If a demon comes back and he finds a place swept clean and on the order, then there might be something to those Anthony Robbins self-help tapes. <laughs> he got the Anthony Robbins $10,000 Supreme CD cassette tape. And he was in order. No. That was done by the broken body of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He is the deliverer. Yes, he is. Go find someone that says that Christians can't have demons and ask them who they cast out demons. It starts with, oh, well, law. Uh, they ain't got the rest. You ain't going to go down and cast out demons out of these Muslims down at that mosque. They made it out of some storefront building over there on Washington. You can see it. There's 50 cabs out in front of there at all times of the day. Head on in there and let them know you got some deliverance in Jesus' name. Come on, man. Preach it. It ain't going to fare well for you, I'll tell you right now. But give it a shot. See how it goes. Head on down to Veterans Memorial Coliseum where we got psychic readers once a year and fortune telling. Start talking about in the name of Jesus. You'll hear some cat hissing out of some of those women. They'll hiss like cats on you. They know, they, those demons have been invited. Those demons are now their providers. They eat off the table of demons. They pay their bills. They ain't coming out. Not until they repent and come through the broken body of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I'll be honest, there's some people that don't have a lot of demons. 
they, they're not as chucked as, as a lot of people like I was. And those tend to be the people that rise up into these Christian churches and become pastors because they don't have drug addictions. They don't have porn addictions. They would get them later. You can read Charisma magazine. <laughs> they get them later, but they don't have them when they get into the ministry. They can conduct themselves pretty good. They're not. My pastor at the church I was telling you about, the associate, he had never seen porn. He had never seen it. And uh, he had never put liquor to his mouth. He had never seen a drug with his eyes. And so he was able to rise up in that system fast. And then he taught his son and he rose up to took it over when the other guy got sick with fibromyalgia. And so they can't help jail guys. They, they can't have people from the highways and the byways coming to the church because it threatens the infrastructure of what they've, what they've made. They're, they're keepers of the fish. They're not too much fishers of men. They got to just get other Christians to be added into that church. It's tough to add people because they don't know about deliverance. They don't believe in deliverance. And so you can be saved if you're, you know, pretty well to do in society. You got your stuff together. Hey, you can plug in fairly pretty good there. You can even rise up to be another pastor. But you come in there with some troubles. You've been into some occult. You ain't making it. You've been into some witchcraft. You, you've been a hooker. You've been a male stripper. You ain't making it, buddy, because the demons ain't going to allow you to do it. And they don't know. They don't practice deliverance. So you're going to have to come out of some people. And eventually, like Mike says, hey, don't leave your church. Try to get everyone delivered. Make them kick you out for doing the right thing. But eventually, you're going to be making some moves. Some people think, like Lot's sons, it's a joke. It's no joke. If you look at that church, there's many of their children were heroin addicts. When that epidemic came along, they got swept up by heroin. Many of them had dozens of lovers now, premarital sex. Many of them don't believe in God whatsoever. I grew up in this church for 15 years. I know what I'm talking about. I'm not a guy who didn't, was in and out for a few years. I was there for 15 years. I know what I'm talking about. I've seen it. I still see some of those kids still addicted to heroin. And it's sad. And their dads were real men of God. They didn't take them through deliverance. So physically, we got to come out. There's some things you got to stop doing. You're in a bowling league with a bunch of guys who drink beer. Listen to that music at the bowling alley. You're going to have to learn to play a little bit of bowling on your, on your day off by yourself with some headphones. There's some things you got to do. Oh, I want to see them saved. Well, you ain't got them saved yet. What makes you think you're going to save them now? Some things you got to get away from. There's some jobs you got to get away from. Guy was wanting to get some deliverance. He goes, well, I got delivered from smoking the other day. I'd like some more deliverance. Someone just said, well, what do you do? He goes, well, I'm into telemarketing. I don't really like it because it's always ripping people off. But my dad gave me the business. It's very lucrative. Well, let's just say he didn't finish his deliverance. A guy comes here a couple weeks ago, and I can't get no demons out of him. Well, I passed him over to Steve. I think I passed him to Mike. Mike passed him to Steve. <laughs> and Steve goes, you got a girlfriend? He goes, yeah, matter of fact, I do. He goes, you having sex with her? Matter of fact, I am. It stops right there. You ain't having, you ain't getting delivered having sex with someone that's not your wife. Are you out of your mind? Come on, man, preach the gospel. You can you can get healed, but I bet that the healing's on a TikTok ticking God. down until the devil steals that healing from you. That's right. He'll steal that healing right from you fast. Got the Mormon guy I was talking about the last time I was here. He got delivered. It was a huge miracle. It was one of those ones where I said, Lord, I got nothing. This can go real good if you do your thing. But I got nothing, so I'm going to sit back and watch it, Lord. And I took him on down to this. Come on in. There was no shame in my game. I really don't like, I didn't bring Brother Michael. In the, we did go to the prayer room. We left the lights on. This time, I put this guy down. I dimmed the lights. I got myself one of those rollaway chairs. I just said, Lord, it's in your hand. This guy gets delivered. He gets healed. He's all these wonderful things. He called. He emails me the other day. Well, I think they're going to kick me out of the Mormon church. 
He goes, they're not into these doctrines, and I've been exposing all these things that they're doing that are not biblical, and they don't like it. Woo! Come on! Hallelujah! Come on! And then he said, hey, I was watching the doctors, and I got all this nervousness shooting through my veins. But I saw on the doctors that there's a, there's a surgery that can open up the ends of something, my spine, and shut these nerve endings down. I said, no, let's stop that. We're going to be getting kicked out of the Mormon church here real soon. Come on down here and let's finish this deliverance and he'll heal your nerves. You can only take somebody so far. The one guy didn't want to change. I'm in the hospital. God healed him from chest compressions, from OD, and they brought him back to life on an opioid addiction, OD. He's in a, he's in a drug den. Had this little, I couldn't tell if it was a man or a girl. I'm not trying to be insultive. Had a hood, was kind of watching us. I was like, well, this is really weird. In a dope house, casting out the devils. He's spitting in this bucket. God gives him an incredible, had a beautiful wife. His wife was so beautiful. Part of her story is, well, I normally didn't date men like, like Omar, but uh, he was so kind and loved God. I, I just ended up falling for him. Beautiful wife. That wasn't enough for him. He gets a son. Not enough for him. No one hears of Omar no more. Omar's a drywaller. You can't give place to the devil. You cannot give place to the devil. You wouldn't think for one minute. I don't know if you've been down to Skid Row down there where they, they, they give away the free food. It is a scary sight. These people are the walking dead. I'm not trying to be insulted. These people don't leave this little corridor. And it is sad. They're wearing tore up clothes. There's free clothes. They just don't want to change their clothes. There's showers in there. They don't shower. They don't want to shower. They just, the demons, just drugs, drugs, drugs. Well, you, not one of you would allow that person. Hey, come on. I'd like to have you uh, be a guest in my home. I'll be going to work here at 9, but I want you to make yourself at home. You'd come home and there'd be nothing there. That guy somehow would find your smartphone and he'd get on Craigslist and he'd have a little sale and everything you held dear would be gone. Somehow this guy that has no desire to do nothing would have all the desires in his world in the world to take your stuff. And you'd come home, there'd be nothing. You couldn't believe the stuff he'd find a buyer for. It'd be gone. And you think you can give place to the devil and you're going to be delivered. You're fooling yourself. You're fooling yourself. You got this doubt, this unbelief, this emotional attachment to all these things and to who you wanted to be and to your career. Well, that's my career. 32 years at this company. My blood, sweat, and tears to build this thing, to help this place. And I'm going to retire in four years. I can't have someone coming against this. I'm going to do for a full retirement. And you got every excuse in the world. Look what happened. God warns Lot and his family, don't look back. We're about to destroy this place. And his wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. Looking back, everything you work for. Oh, I gotta have it. I gotta have it. Hey, God will take care of you. God will take care of you. He'll give you strategies. He'll give you a mindset. He's giving you an intellect and intelligence. He's giving you free will. He'll give you ingenuity, creativity. He's got all of these things. You're not gonna be sitting there broke and busted. He is your provider. You're eating off his table. But that grumbling and that complaining and that backbiting and, and, and wrestling with God even. It's amazing the numbers that the devil can pull over good people. When you sit them alone and you get in that little room, it takes about an hour of talking. See, the more you talk, it's kind of like uh, first 48 hours. You get the guy in the, in the room and at first, oh, I don't know nothing about that. I've never even been down to that. I don't even know that neighborhood you're talking about. And they just would you like some soda? Would you like some, would you like candy bar? They just sit him down there and they know after a while he's just going to open up and really tell what's going on. And so that's what we try to do. We just try to listen to all, everything. Oh, it's going pretty good, preacher. You know, it's going pretty good. It's just, it's just this one thing. My wife. If she, you know, if I could get her on board and really see what I'm trying to do for the glory of God, you just keep letting them talk and you find out, oh, we got them. There they are. They start coming out where the demon has got some holds. You get, to get around people. You get down to who you really are. That devil has put a number in your head about your things. He did it to me. At first, I got, 
I got an incredible deliverance. I had a backslid. I hadn't done weed for seven years. I'm back smoking weed. I found I was able to beat that after about a year going back and forth here and there. And, and uh, I pick up these demons from this guy. And I couldn't get rid of the lust demons. They were so powerful. They were way more powerful than I ever had in my life. He had superpowered lust demons, and they came into me through smoking that pipe. You do drugs, and you do drugs with somebody, you's in trouble. You, them demons and them people are coming right in you because they'd rather have you a born-again Christian than some sinner. They'll load him up any day of the week. They're taking the opportunity that's given to them. And I got loaded up with these spirits. And I'm doing everything. I'm, I'm not some kind of just, I had a ministry. The first time I, I smoked weed, I thought I was going to try to go into the jails. There was going to be an invisible wall. Boom. Whoa. And I'd hit it and you can't go in here. You smoke the forbidden marijuana. You're out. I went in there. Preaching went fine. I was confused. I didn't understand the anointing. God's still going to get use what you give him. He's still going to use what you give him. And he wanted those people saved. He knew I knew the word of God. And he showed up and some people got saved. So you get confused because you can do some good things for God. That you're not infected. That it's not the devil. And I wanted this lust demon out. I said, okay, I'm going to fast for a day. Thing came back. I'm going to fast for two days. Thing came back. I went all the way up to eight days with no food. Trying to get rid of these demons. Now, it says some demons don't come out except by fast and praying. Fasting and praying will give you a closer relationship with God, faith in God, and so you can cast out demons. But I was trying to fast out demons because that's what the church had taught me. Hey, just fast more. Just read your Bible more. Just pray more. And I'm not about to tell these church people anything about me. Now I'm already in the inner circle of some of these preachers, and I see how they talk about people amongst themselves. Oh, yeah. They get really frustrated with people that don't buy into what they're preaching. There's something wrong with those people that aren't receiving the word in which they're sharing. I was trying all these things. It wouldn't work. So finally, I go through deliverance, an incredible deliverance at the house of healing. And I'm going great. Until the Lord wants to deliver me from some more. And that's where some of you are. Ooh, that, that, that some more part is tough. <laughs> Oh, I had some hopes and dreams. I wanted to serve God. No problem serving God. But I got to have some nice stuff doing it too. <laughs> hey, I believe what them TV preachers were talking about. Man, I had sold my seed, man. I'm ready to reap my harvest. I, I'm ready to have some money and God. <laughs> I was looking back just like Lot's wife. And what was in front of me was the house of healing. Now, this place is not a lot nicer. If we would have had this place, I probably wouldn't have had to go through so much struggle and pain. But we were in this <laughs> tiny little place of about 950 foot. And it had house of healing in stickers that Mike had bought at Home Depot. Yeah. And we got this great sign here. Some guy made that out of a, a plasma cutting machine or steel cutting. That's nice. But man, house of healing with stickers. That's good. <laughs> I looked at that. I said, Lord, I don't know. <laughs> I thank you for the deliverance, and I'll help Brother Mike out. I love Brother Mike. Uh, to the day I die, I'll come down there. I'll help, you know. Can't commit to every week now. But, you know, I want to show up a lot. I want to be a regular guy there. God's going to call you to some stuff that if you look in the natural, why did Lot's wife looked back. Where are we going? We had a home there. We had commerce there. We had friends there. She had some girlfriends down there. They had some good times. They spent, they were probably pretty affluent with all their herds and flocks that were running up in the fields. They probably were having some nice spa days. There were some nice things going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. And now you're leading us out. Where are you leaving? Where are you leading us to? Are you sure this thing's going to burn? Because I really like that. Just gone. Gone. And really the deception, it wasn't that the things I had were sinful. It was the place that I gave them. 
I worked real hard for my money. I don't work real hard in the ministry. Sometimes it's tough. It's tough to counsel people. Just the other day, I had to rely on Kelly's prayers. I was going home. It was 5 o'clock. She came out. I was like, oh, nice. Kelly's going to say goodbye. And she says, no, you have one more coming. <laughs> I guess I got time to eat. I'll be back. It's, it's sometimes it's hard. Going into the jails and these guys turn on you. I show up on Christmas Day. I show up on New Year's Day. Not that there's a lot going on New Year's Day, but some football. I could have been watching some football. And some of the guys are glued to the TV, and they call for church, and they don't even look because they don't want to make eye contact with me. They don't even go. I said, man, I come down here on a Thursday. I come and sit here in this counseling session for you for an hour. I'm in here preaching my guts out, and you don't even show up. I just, I just look at us. Oh, man. I just got to say, hey, thank you that half you came out today. You get the blessing, I guess, today. A, you get a double portion today. Let's just go for it. Amen. Sometimes when you're looking in the natural, you can't see what God's doing. I'm not God and you're not God. You haven't fixed nobody in your life. And you're not going to start fixing people. You got to trust God with those people. We play a role with people. Our job is to love them. Hey, I got to be real with people. There's times I got to tell people the hard truth. Hey, man, that's not right. Hey, that's not going to go well for you. I got to tell people the truth, but I can't fix anybody. I can only help those people that want to be helped. And I got to say, you know what? I'm a servant of God. I'm a bond servant of the Lord. I'm not serving myself. I'm not building my ministry. It's not called Rick Cott Ministries. It's called the, the ministry of Jesus Christ. My name's on it. And my, if my name's on it, then it has to be big. It has to have a lot of people and it has to have a lot of money. My name ain't on it. It's God's ministry. And so I'm just going to be a role player as a slave, somebody that's already surrendered my life to do his will. And you know what? He gives me some incredible opportunities. I get some incredible opportunities down the road. Sometimes there's tough ones. And you got to know how to persevere through these times of labor. You got to keep on keeping on doing the right thing, knowing that certain doors are opened up when you show yourself to be faithful. Some people quit ministries because you don't see the fruit right away. Sometimes there's some adjustments that you have to make with your own attitude and get a little bit more love so you can get a little bit more productivity. But ultimately, you got to keep sowing that seed and you got to keep watering that seed and you're going to see a harvest. I've seen some incredible harvests. That's why I wasn't worried. Well, that was a nice crowd that came out, but I wasn't worried. I said, hey, if 15 people come today, I said, well, I know how revivals start. Sometimes I only get five or six people. I got to get five or six people having a miracle touch of God. They got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. They got to get some kind of supernatural healing. And you know what? The word of God is going to spread because they're going to have all week to spread what God did in that little pod. And come next week, we're going to have a nice sized crowd. We all get excited about big numbers. It's our human nature. But if you can't be faithful with what God has given you, on, your man. family, your children, Let's go, he talks about you can't, you're not even qualified for the ministry if you don't have your own household in order. You're thinking about having a ministry and your kids are running crazy. You can't instill the word of God. You, you know, I've been telling them. Well, you've been telling them. You haven't been showing them. You haven't been spending time with them. You haven't been loving them. You haven't been taking interest in who they are individually as a human being and nourishing that. You've been nourishing what you think is right and how you think is fit. Everybody learns different. And you gotta be able to you gotta be able to humble yourself. That time will come and those doors will open up, but we gotta take care of yourself. You gotta deliver yourself, take the plank out of your own eye, then you'll see clearly how you can get specks out of other people's eyes. Then you gotta take care of your family, and now you're in a position for this ministry to open up. Amen. Come on, man. So, I wasn't moving forward. I wasn't moving forward with God. I was trying to advance, and I was doing good. The business was coming back. We were coming out of the recession. I was making money. These things were happening. And I started spending less and less time 
at certain ministries, especially the counseling, the hard ones, especially coming in the house of healing and the prayer team at the altar, and I was letting those things go, and I was putting things first. And I knew God was calling me, and I was trying to run from it because I knew it was a bunch of work. <laughs> it says, be diligent to show yourself approved, a workman, not needing to be ashamed, right for the divided in the word of truth. You need to be a workman. And then what happened? The devil got his little access and shut the whole thing down. And we went a long time without making any money. And then a lot of money started going out. And a lot of money was going out. And then these things that were in there that I didn't want to go deep and find these things in there. There was some fear about not having things. There was some love for having things. There was some sense of false peace in there. When I had a bunch of things, hey, it's all right. I sleep like a baby. Everything's good. The money's in order. Bills are paid. We got excess. We got years and years of provision. We're good. And the Lord says, that's not faith. It's not wrong to have those things. But you're having these things try to fulfill what I want to instill you in you. True faith that I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to leave you broke. I'm not going to leave you without things that you need. I'm not going to leave you without having abundant life. Abundant life is an air conditioner. That's an abundant life. Yeah. You think abundant life is Camelback Mountain. How about an air conditioner? How about a, how about a car with an air conditioner? Come on, we're a rich people. But we're looking at these things. Why are you looking at those things? You're spending time on the television again. It's telling you of your vision. Oh, man, that Lexus is you. It's got your name on it. Luxury. Man, you should be riding in a Lexus. It's telling you the vision. The Lord said, I want you to trust in me. I don't want you to trust in what you can see. I want you to trust me where I'm leading you. These people, these demon spirits that get into Lot's daughters, they commit incest. That's how foul these spirits are. And they give birth to these two nations, the Ammonites and the Moabites. They were a thorn in Israel's flesh for years. So much they're going to the promised land. They said, hey, we're not going to graze your fields. We're not going to be drinking out of your wells. Like, you cannot pass through here. It's a no-go for you. That's how evil these people grew up to be. All the descendants of Lot's daughters. And one of them, their chief god was Moloch. Still around, all these spirits. And while I'm telling you this, they're all around right now. You know Moloch's around. Yep. He's called Planned Parenthood. Yep. Yep. We know all these demonic spirits are moving around. They didn't go anywhere. These, these demonic spirits aren't going anywhere until they're thrown into the lake of fire. Come on, they're man. here on this earth. That's right. The devil's saying, are these preachers saying, oh, yeah, I put the devil under my feet, and that's where I keep him. I said, the devil put some money in your pocket so you keep your mouth shut. That's true. Come on. Come on, man, that's true. Could you imagine a preacher that's pandering for a $25 million Learjet? Do you know, just to fly a Learjet, it's $600 per hour in maintenance? That the FAA requirements to keep those... Those things in the air, you got to do all this maintenance. The storage fee on these things, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And you think you wonder why you ain't hearing about deliverance? All of these guys, Mike's got them right there, the wall of fame. These guys cast out demons all the time. A.A. A. Allen, this guy was casting out all kinds of demons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All those dudes, Smith Wigglesworth, all those guys casting out demons wherever they went. Just like Jesus said, these things that I do, you'll do. Jesus preached the word. He healed the sick. He cast out demons. It says, and he made you alive who were dead in your 
trespasses and sins. So he made you alive even though you got all this junk in you. He saved you. He didn't tell you to fix yourself. He said, come as you are, and I will shape and mold you as clay. I will make you the man and the woman I created you to be. What's the first thing a craftsman does that works with clay? He takes a big clump, and then he whittles it down. He whittles it down, and he gets rid of the stuff that he doesn't need to make what he's making. you got to trust God and what he's doing in your life. He's going to do something good. I'm telling you, I have seen him transform people like you can't believe. God has shown me through ministry things that I tell people they have a hard time believing. I'm talking about mentally ill people that come in dragging themselves. At one point, you lose your bodily coordination. They come into jail oh, just moving like weird. Oh, come in. And next thing you know, there was nothing wrong with their body. They looked different. I was like, man, that's kind of a handsome guy. What? He, his face was all contorted. They start moving your face. Dude getting totally transformed by the word of God. And he wouldn't stop. Most people start with deliverance. But they don't want to go any further. They want their life back. Some people are here today, you want your life back. You want it the way it used to be. Well, because you're not supposed to live the way it used to be, you got into the mess that you're in right now. So you need to let God have his full way with you. And this guy in particular would say, hey, I'm still getting demons out. And people would look at him like, man, this is the 15th time you've been barfing and howling and all that. What's wrong with you? And they would ostracize him. They wouldn't let him lead the Bible study. And when he went there, they all kind of sat away from him like, what's wrong with you? We all got fixed in two or three sessions of deliverance. <laughs> no, they only wanted to deliver from them repetitive thoughts that they had that evil in their heart that they knew that was manifesting and taking them over. He said, I want the fullness of God. I was gone, and now he's doing something in me. I want it all. Amen. This guy preached the message before he went to prison, and it was incredible. And I asked him, I said, man, that was a powerhouse message. It was literally, as I take these men in stages, and he had been there for about a year and a half to two years, he preached stage by stage. I remember... Each time I was teaching on those sections of things, and he put it all into this one message. I said, how long did that take you to put that thing together? He said, I wrote that down word for word last night. That's how clear his mind was to hear from God. You can't hear from God? There's no problem with God. He's been talking to you. You, ain't, you don't have ears to hear. You don't have eyes to see. Why? You didn't want to hear what he was telling you. Stop doing that. Stop looking for somebody. Stop looking for a spouse. Stop looking for a boyfriend. You're wondering, I got to have somebody. This is what makes me feel good. I need to laugh. Uh, no, he wants you to go home by yourself and learn to love him. Amen. He wants you to go and be with him. Amen. Then he's going to give you somebody. God doesn't play a second fiddle to spouses. And so you got to go to this next level. You've been hurt. You've been wounded. Somebody stomped all over you. You came to the church and the church didn't help you. Oh, and even a church that knew about deliverance didn't love you the way you needed to be loved. Look, we're fallible people. Right. We're not perfect people. Every person makes mistakes. That's why you got to learn to forgive in everything you do. Oh, I forgave everybody. Doesn't look like that with the look on your face. <laughs> Why are you walk around with this grimace all the time? Why you, you you're still pissed off? You're still pissed. How dare they do that? Oh, it's it's if they're really gonna get to you, they really gotta do something to you. It wouldn't mean anything. That devil, he's smart. He puts a wound on your soul, has someone stomp all over your heart. You give your heart to somebody. I tried it when I was a teenager. I said, I was pretty lonely, man. I came from Nebraska to Arizona. I was living right over there on on Thomas, man, that place was, we had a swamp cooler. I didn't know what a swamp cooler was. I learned real quick, swamp coolers aren't air conditioners. <laughs> and it was hot. And we didn't have much money. And I didn't feel like confiding in my boys that would be a sign of weakness. So I started doing it with my girlfriend, the one that I never knew. She only knew the fake me. Well, she got to know the real me and decided to get rid of me. <laughs> I said, wow, that, 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 that's, really, that's really uncalled for. <laughs> After everything I gave you, 
You love me when I gave you nothing. Then I give you everything. And you still told me, there's the door. Oh, man. Hey, it happens to all of us. It happened to most of you. And uh, you got to forgive them. When I looked at her husband on Facebook, it was easy for me to forgive. <laughs> She had obviously made the wrong choice. <laughs> he didn't look happy. It was a family photo and he had a grimace. <laughs> that devil's smart. Most of your wounds as a Christian are from people you gave everything to. Your family, your spouses, your church friends. Your business partners. Now you got this wound. And the devil knows right where to pick it. And he knows the right time. He don't want to pick it all the time. Because you do something about it. So he only needs to pick it to bring you back down. He loves the yo-yo. See, to be a masterful deceiver, he only hammers and hammers and hammers when you're close to the end. When he knows he can just pulverize you into the dust. But as you're seeking God, and you're growing in godliness, he knows he can tear that stuff out of you by reminding you of that stuff. So he loves to drive you away from God. And he loves to put a barrier. He knows that when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, Jesus dies, and it says there was an earthquake, and the veil was torn. See, only the high priest could go into the Holy of Holies. Now he's saying, you're the Holy of Holies. Amen. You now enter into the presence of God. And the devil has to put some kind of false barrier there. A false veil. He don't want you going to the presence of God. You go into the presence of God, you're going to find help in your time of need. You're going to find power in the Holy Spirit to overcome the schemes of the devil. You're going to bear fruit. That fruit will last for eternity. He doesn't want you in the presence of God. So he puts this false veil here. And what's he working with? He's working with the rejection. He's working with those wounds on your soul that he put on you through the betrayal of people that you love and trusted. Come on, man. Hey, sinners always used to turn on me, man. I chalked it up. I don't even know their names, man. I chalked it up as those dudes from that school, those people from that neighborhood. That meant nothing to me. That's just how that world worked. But in order to put a wound on your soul, it has to be somebody that you care about. And these wounds, man, they, they, they get faster than enough. Now, you don't like yourself. You don't like yourself. Well, hey, I don't really like the guy that used to live right down the street. I lived three blocks down when I first moved here. That was my second house. I moved from 7th Ave right down the block. I don't like that guy, but I learned from that guy. I learned what not to do. And I learned from those mistakes. And I don't let those mistakes come back again in my life now. And so I forgave myself of those failures, all those things that I lost, every opportunity that I blew. I forgive myself of those things. I know according to the word of God, he makes all things new. He, I knew he was making all things new because the first thing that happened when I got saved, I started caring about people. And that's a really confusing thing for a ticket scalper. She, <laughs> caring about people? I said, yeah. This voice would speak to me and say, uh, hey, did you treat him like you want to be treated? I was like, absolutely not, but why do we care? I'm talking to myself now. <laughs> This thing kept happening so much. I'm going to the mini bar wherever I can. I'm working the Super Bowl down in Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm going, to, I'm like, where's the mini bar? Oh, there it is. I'm going over there. Next thing I'm ordering doubles. And, man, okay, I'm feeling normal again. Let's go back to work. We're here to make some money. And this voice is coming back again. I'm like, man, this is really weird. So when the Bible says that he makes all things new, it clicked. I'm being made new. If we're being shaped and molded in the image of Jesus, I had a uh-oh moment. Ooh, I'm supposed to be a kind person. In order to protect my rejection, I was just mean to everybody. Now, if you could overlook my meanness and come in, I might let you in. But you know this could come out at any time, so don't get your hopes up that you're going to get something I ain't willing to give up. This was the defense mechanism of the rejection. And so I needed all these things, money, the way I treated people, the way that people reacted towards me, I needed those to protect this rejection. I didn't want to deal with rejection. Rejection was so far gone that I couldn't even hear truth. I went to a psychologist one time. Recommendation of the principal, my junior high. They, they recommended some, some real help. And uh, 
I went down there. I'm pretty sure I had some demons manifesting too. Because it was, it was a student psychologist or psychiatrist, whichever it was. And I knew behind that glass mirror, there was some somebody watching. Because I had watched enough television. And I saw that on Cops and Robbers show. So I began to sp spin a couple times on my chair. And I was like, wait, he's not saying nothing. I started to spin a little bit more. How much can we get away with? Next thing you know, he's talking to me while I'm spinning. Sure enough, he wrote a prescription for psych meds. But they couldn't write back then. They couldn't prescribe the psych meds. Only your family practitioner could do it. So I went from there, and I went to my family practitioner, and he goes, I don't think Rick needs this. My dad goes, oh, yes, he does. He goes, I think he's just a normal kid, and he's just figuring things out. Are you sure you want to do this? You were sure. The doctor said, and he had that script. He kept pointing right to, but those were the spirits that were in my dad. He was already on psych meds from the VA hospital. Oh, wow. So those spirits were trying to get me. Those things straight lobotomized me. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't a big mouth kid. All the thoughts just were in my head. I went to a camp. I didn't say one word for a week. Not one word to one person. <sighs> Them things are dangerous. Dangerous. Trying to fix your manifestations of spirits with drugs. I tried it with weed. It didn't work. I just didn't care about things. Now they're messing with the way your brain processes information. and Oh, man. Let God help you with that. Let God help you with that. You seek God for that. My dad got born again, and the next thing you know, I looked, and those bottles were full. No one told him to get off those things. No one ever said those things were evil. The Holy Ghost just said, you're done. And so with me, I don't know how I got up by the grace of God. I just At one point, I just quit taking them. They quit buying them for me. I just quit taking them. But the world has got a way of trying to fix you. Mm -hmm. And if you think the world is going to fix you, it's not going to work. Nope. It's only by the power of the Holy Spirit. Come on, man. Preach. The power of the Holy Spirit. When you get delivered, you'll see the word of God so clear. Yes. And you'll be able to preach it in love. Yes. These disciples had so much Holy Ghost in them. Why? They gave up everything. God said he's not a respecter of persons. What he did for one, he'll do for all. Such an anointing that they were laying sick people in the streets. Hey, you might not be able to get into the synagogue for the prayer time into the house, but man, you lay down on the street. You get close to these guys, and boom, they were getting healed. I believe that it was this zone that was around them. This zone that was around them. I was in the gym last night. There's a co-ed sauna la fitness and these guys were like yeah man we were so drunk man we tore that house up man and smoking this and that and i can't believe we don't have no children because man all our boys got children and all the women we've been with all of a sudden whew, man that holy boat go i was like man i'm about to get out of here i've been in here 15 minutes i was in that sauna for 35 minutes sweating like a pig i was pouring out my heart these guys were in trouble the holy ghost wasn't going to allow these men to glorify darkness when the good news of Jesus Christ was available, I want to save you. I want to help you. He said, well, I don't, I don't believe in pot. And I said, God saves pot smokers. God saves sinners. He never told you to quit no sin. He says, you've got to come to him as you are. And then the power of God transforms you. And they keep transforming you into the image of Jesus Christ himself. That's what he's doing, this incredible work. I don't know how he does it, but he's doing it. And he's whittling away your old self. And it's up to you to allow God to have his full way through you. Let him have his full way through you. You've heard this from the doctor. You've heard this from a, a church person. Man, you come up here and you repent to God. You have to be sorry for your sin. I remember when I first started getting sorry for my sin. It wasn't comfortable. It wasn't comfortable to look at my life and all the things I had said. All the things I had done to people. All the people I had hurt. All the things I had spent years trying to accumulate and they had done nothing for me. And I had to look at my life and the Holy Spirit began to break me down. And I just had to say, I'm sorry. I didn't have any answers for it. There was no excuses for that. I'm sorry for what I've done. That's all you got to do. I'm sorry. He's not asking you to know how to fix it. He doesn't expect you to know how to fix it. He expects you to come to him. Come on, man. Such a good God. You come to God as you are. 
filthy as you are. There's some things that are offensive to God that aren't that offensive to you. Their offense, sex uh, with children is highly offensive to everybody in society, but a very small amount of people. That's highly offensive, man. You don't mess with kids. You don't do that, man. I, anybody that has kids, man, you know how precious kids are. You know how special kids are. You don't play with kids. And you don't take advantage of the elderly. Hey, we know that someone worked all their life. You took all their money. They're down in Cass. I remember one time I was preaching downtown. I used to do it with some McDoubles with my kids. And it was during the heart of the recession. I gave one guy a, a, a hamburger and then another. And next thing you know, there's all these people down there. Where's the help? Where's the hope? We would walk in the streets. I thought there were people that worked downtown. They were homeless. They were, they were broken. They had nothing. It was just walking around homeless. There's a lost and dying and hurting world. But in order for you to help those people that you want to help, you got to see some sin in you that isn't as offensive to you as those certain sins I just mentioned. Grumbling and complaining is a very serious sin to God. That's the opposite of faith. On, That's walking by sight. I don't like what happened. I don't like how these people have treated me. I don't like the, the cards that I'm dealt here. That's grumbling and complaining. It costs a large amount of Jews their lives one day. The devil will swallow you up with grumbling and complaining. You do these things and you think, oh, I know I shouldn't do it. You're always backbiting people. You're always talking bad about people. And you don't want to do it, but it just keeps coming up. You're always gossiping, telling other people's business, stirring up this discord. The Lord says he hates even the sower of a seed of discord. That's right. There's some things that we got to repent of. And in order to do that, you got to be honest with yourself. You got to be honest with yourself, how you treat people. Christians have this problem with thinking they're great. You've been watching the television again. Unfortunately, some of you go to those churches, how great you are. Yeah, we're a royal priesthood, a peculiar people, and you know, we're going to inherit the kingdom. Yeah, that's true. But on this earth, even though I'm a master of all, I'm a slave while I'm on this earth. I'm a servant of God. And if I'm serving God, God is in the people business. He's trying to help people. You need to correct your attitude and repent about the way you've been treating people. There's some people you're mad at and you're not seeing. It's the spirits that are in those people. You're mad at these church people? Yeah, they did you wrong. They should have done what they did. They didn't help you when you needed help. Yeah, they should have came through. You tied there all your life and now you couldn't get $500 to keep your, your electric on. I know that was wrong, but you got to see the spirits that are behind what was in operation. Come on, man. Preach. Forgive these people from your heart and pray for them. There's some people, they, they look at me, man, I guarantee you, they've seen me. And they run. They don't like me. But I every week, now a week goes by when I don't see somebody, especially with my, my son. Lord's always stirring up faith in my son. Someone will come up and, and they look and they, they look completely normal and say, hey man, I really appreciate you, man. You really helped me. I spent some time with you in, in jail and, and my son's always there. And he always gets excited like, hey, what get, what dad is doing, I'm seeing the fruits of it. I'm seeing the fruits of it. There's going to be some fruit in your ministry. There's going to be some people that are going to love you for what you've done for them. And there's going to be some people that just don't care. <laughs> they just don't care. They're not interested in you. They're not interested in what you're doing. That's fine. It doesn't make me feel good. Yeah, I, I was brothers and with a lot of these guys, 15 years I was brothers with these guys. And this worrying, the New World Order, the Illuminati, the chemtrails, you got Bitcoin, the New World Order currency, you got genetically modified fish mutating inside you. Hey, there's some things you can not do. There's some things you can be aware of, but you're not supposed to have fear. This stuff causing fear in you. How am I going to fear the whole atmosphere is spraying chemtrails? What am I going to walk around with a gas mask? I'm not going to be able to preach the word very effectively with a gas mask. So God, I'm going to trust in the sovereignty of God just to keep me alive. Because it says, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means harm them. 
That means if I breathe their toxic air, I'm going to be all right. Eat their toxic fish every once in a while. I'm going to keep living. You got to get over this fear. You got Some people got fear that they're not going to be all the way delivered. Some people got fear of what they're going to be like when they're all the way delivered. There's peace in God. Now, peace is real. Now, peace is tangible. When you lay your head down and you go to sleep and you sleep like a baby and you rise up in the morning and the first thing you think about is, thank you, God. And there's no aches and pains in your body. You know God is good and you know he's coming through and you know that all the things that you hope for and dream for are just around the corner. And if you get rid of that operating by sight spirit, then you could probably see there's been a wonderful ministry standing right, sitting right in front of you for years. You just didn't see it. And that's the opportunity we have right now to get something. To get something from God that's real and something that's powerful. Man, every once in a while I come in here, I'm waiting for the day I just rip like Vivian. That's normally how I preach. So all the guards go, hey, here's the guy who's always yelling. But we're not yelling, man. We're just going for it, man. We're just we're just going for it, and God's moving, Amen. and we're excited about God. But man, every time it's just like, hey, what comes on me is, hey, let's just lay this foundation. Amen. Let's walk through these things that are available right now with God. Let's get this healing in your body. There's no need to walk around. God healed my body. He'll heal your body. All those, man, are you kidding me? Football, back in the day, they taught us to hit with our head first. You can really hurt somebody with your head. I used to ram people with my head when I got tired because it was easier to hit them with my head than my hands. God healed me from all those neck pain. My neck used to cry. Used to cry. My neck was bad. My knees were bad. My back was bad. My shoulder hurt. I was doing crazy injections in my shoulders, injections in my knees. God healed my body. I used to have restless nights, tossing and turning, going to the bathroom two or three times, getting up at four in the morning, not being able to go to sleep, starting the day, then being tired, having to take a nap. I've been through all that stuff. There's no need for you to be through that. You can be healed. Healed in your mind, healed in your soul, healed in your body physically. But you've got to receive it by faith. You've got to know that God wants to heal you. God's not mad at you. He already judged you with the cross of Calvary and pronounced his son guilty and poured out his cup of wrath and anger on him. And he became sin, not figuratively, literally sin. And he died for the sins of the world and descended into hell. So you never have to go to hell. And now since he's risen and he's at the right hand of the father, he's sending the Holy Ghost. Who's getting the Holy Ghost? Those who want the Holy Spirit. Those who want the Holy Spirit. you got to have your breakthrough in your, in your mind. Some of you have been looking for God, but you're trying to reach God in a way that you can see is uh, attainable. It's only by faith. Come in completely as you are. Lord, i got nothing. It's like the Israelites. They're, 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 hey, we're free. Is this real? Now they find themselves by the Red Sea in a place, and here comes this marching army. Oh, no, they're looking. And then God does the miraculous opening away. It's only through the power of God, through the sovereignty of God. And he'll set you free tonight. But we got to come with faith. You got to come with a want. You got to come with a desire. You got to come with a need. And you got to come with an expectation that you're getting it. So what we're going to do, I'm going to pray. I know some of you have to go. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep walking through deliverance. I'd say every part of your day. At one point, I believe... Demons are just coming out, but I believe at one point you got to worship. Demons come out through worship, or you got to be a worshiper. You, you, you pop in that, that CD, you start praising God, then you go to your deliverance. Sometimes you just got to serve, and you're serving God, and you're serving people. Then you go get in that car, and you cast out devils. There's some things that will only come out by you doing something. Yes. So keep doing what you're doing if you can't stay, but everybody that's able to stay, hey, that's the mindset. Let that faith begin to stir up in you right now. Tonight you're getting something. So now you're getting something that's tangible, something that brings about a supernatural difference in your life. So I'm going to pray, and then the ministries team's going to come up, and we're going to line up here with your need. And here's the knee. you got to come out from the world physically, 
Meaning you know you got to repent from some things you're involved in. Some people you're involved with. And you know when you've heard the Holy Spirit and you haven't been listening. So some of you are going to make and repent that you're coming out from the world physically. And some of you emotional. you got all these emotions entrenched in the world and you need to repent of that. And if you repent of that, there's going to be some freedom in here that you're going to walk out and you're going to know that God has taken a burden off you that you've been carrying that wasn't due you. The devil put that on you. You're going to know that it's been removed. So that's going to be right after my prayer. I want you to come to the front. Well, Heavenly Father, I thank you for all these brothers and sisters that came out for your word. Lord, I know that some are departing, going home. They're in the middle of this fight. And I thank you that you've given them the victory. I pray that your anointing would be upon them, Lord, as they walk through this deliverance and they walk in the newness, Lord, of Christ Jesus the Lord. I thank you, Lord, that ministry opportunities are opening up. Blessings. Blessings, Lord, on those people that are departing. And Lord, I thank you for everyone that's coming to this altar. And I thank you that every one of them tonight gets healed that wants to get healed, and thank you for the deliverance. Everyone who wants to be delivered is going to be delivered, and let it be all for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Great message, Rick. We love you, brother. Amen. Amen. You tore the house down. Amen. If that's you, Come on up to the front. We're going to just bind these devils. We're going to help you out. We're going to bind these devils. All we got to do first is repent. repent. And uh, we're going to walk through this deliverance. If that's you, come on down to the front. Steve's going to walk Man. us through this thing. Now, when the, it, the, the Lord says, when you stand praying, make sure you forgive. Amen. Okay. If you don't forgive yourself or others... God will not forgive you. And those demons are not coming out. They're going to stay so strong, stiff in, in position and strongholds in your, in your mind, your heart, your soul. You're going to be wondering what's going on. So we're going to, I'm going to walk everybody through this prayer right now in the mighty name of Jesus before we, get, before we get started, okay? And this is from your heart right now. It's not lip service. It's from your heart, okay? God looks at your heart. The Bible says he, he, he goes to and throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of those whose hearts are perfect for him. You ain't got to be a perfect person, but your heart has to be humble. Your heart has to ha be strong for the Lord and want to repent. So let's pray this prayer right now in the name of Jesus. Everybody pray with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you now. With a broken heart. We are sincere, Lord. We know we must forgive ourselves and every person who's wronged us or hurt us. So we forgive every person who's ever done anything to hurt us. We release them. To you right now. In the name of Jesus. And we forgive ourselves. In the mighty name of Jesus. We release ourselves. To you. For everything. We've ever done. To bring curses. Upon our lives. We take hold. Of forgiveness. Cleansing. By the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Heavenly Father. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Holy Spirit. You are welcome. In this place. Now we will fight. We will bind. And loose. And command. In the name of Jesus. And the word of God says. Where there's two or more gathered together, the Lord is here in this place. We welcome you, Lord Jesus. And we bind and loose and command, and we know what we have in the word of God is true. 
So let's take hold of it in the name of Jesus. Let's go. Let's get them. All right. Now, now, whatever problems you have, you speak to that spirit. It's a spirit. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. You're wrestling against principality, spiritual wickedness, rulers of darkness, and high places, soul wounds, unforgiveness, fear, doubt, drug stuff, lust. You speak to that spirit in the name of Jesus. You tell that devil, devil, it's over. I have authority over you. I am a child. I'm a blood-bought child of the living God. You speak to that devil in the name of Jesus. You got to do it. We can't kick them all out for you. You got to kick them out. You have authority. We're going to help you. We're going to lead you. But you, go, you tell that devil in the name of Jesus, it's time to go. No more. No more. No more, devil. We bind you. We loose your holes in the name of you. Come out of me. Come out of me right now, devil. Anger, bitterness, frustration, fear, doubt, worry. Come out in the name of Jesus. All you lust demons, drug spirits, alcohol spirits, come out of me right now in the name of Jesus. 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 Come out of me right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Anger, bitterness, frustration, fear, doubt, worry. Come out of me right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come out. Witchcraft. Curses, hexes, and spells come out right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, arthritis, pain, come out, devil. Heart attack spirits, come out right now. High blood pressure, come out right now in the name of Jesus. Right now, diabetes, we curse you. Diabetes, we bind you. Diabetes, we charge you. Come out, devil. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out of him right now. Every sickness spirit, every witchcraft infirmity, sickness demon, come out right now in the name of Jesus. You have nothing on these people, devil. Move it right now. Every lust spirit, every familiar spirit, come out right now in the name of Jesus. All you mother curses, come out. Father curses, come out. Father curses, come out right now, devil. Every father curse, come out right now in the name of Jesus, right now. Every generational curse affecting your life, come out right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come out right now. Fear, doubt, unbelief, come out. Homosexuality, we bind you. Homosexuality, we curse you. Homosexuality, we charge the entire legion in the name of Jesus. Come out right now, devil. Come out right now, devil. Lesbian spirits, transgender, come out right now. Finger pointing, blame shifting, critical spirit, negative spirit, Jezebel, Ahab, come out, devil, in the mighty name of Jesus. Be destroyed. Be destroyed, be destroyed, be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Anger, we bind you, devil. Anger, we curse you. Anger, we charge you. Come out in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty conquering name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Fight, people, fight. You are soldiers in the army of the living God. You have authority. The Lord is with you. The Bible says, if he is with you, who can be against me? Greater is he in me than he is in this world. I have authority. I have authority. And I will use that authority in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Fight. You tell that devil, no more. No more. No more. You come out of me right now. Multiple sclerosis, we bind you. Multiple sclerosis, we curse you. Multiple sclerosis, we charge you, devil. Come out of those bones. Come out of those tendons. Come out of those joints. Come out of those muscles. Come out of the soul. Diabetes, come out. Autoimmune disorder, come out. Autoimmune disorder, come out. Autoimmune disorder, be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Be destroyed. Autoimmune disorder, come out. Autoimmune disorder, come out. Autoimmune disorder, come out. Crippling curses, be destroyed. Move it, devil. High blood pressure, come out. High cholesterol, come out. Every lust demon, spiritual husband, spiritual wife, we bind you, devil. We loose your hole. Be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Come out of him right now. Homosexuality, come out. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Come right now. 
Confusion, we bind you. Confusion, we curse you. Confusion, we charge you in the name of Jesus. Mental illness, we bind you. Mental illness, we curse you. Mental illness, we charge you. Be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Fear, we curse you. Fear, we bind you. Fear, we charge you. Panic attacks, we bind you. Panic attacks, we curse you. Come out, devil. Mind racer, come out. Are you incubus spirits, succubus spirits? Come out, devil. Spiritual husband, spiritual wife, every sexual lust demon, every sexual lust curse, come out right now in the name of Jesus. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit healing fire flow in the mighty name of Jesus. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Jesus bore our griefs. He bore our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes there is healing available for us. We take hold of healing in the mighty, awesome name of Jesus. Minds be healed. Emotions be healed. Nerves be healed. Stomach be healed. Bowels be healed. Tendons and joints be healed. Be made whole. Mind be healed, cerebral cortex be healed, prefrontal cortex be healed, medulla pons be healed, cerebellum be healed, olfactory bone be healed, midbrain, forebrain, hindbrain, stems, pons be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Hearts be healed, high blood pressure be healed, high cholesterol be healed, lower back pain be healed. Bowels be healed, stomach be healed, we curse every one of you. Devils, poverty spirits, we curse you. Poverty spirits, we bind you. Poverty spirits, we charge the entire legion. Be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Take your filthy hands off. Every poverty spirit, we curse you. Poverty spirits, we bind you. Be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Demons hindering your prosperity, we curse you. We bind you. We charge the entire legion in the name of Jesus. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. First John 4.4 4. Greater is he in you than he is in this world. If God is with you, who can be against you? Take hold in the mighty name of Jesus. Isaiah 54 and 17. No weapons formed against you shall prosper. Not now, not ever. You will speak against that spirit coming against you. You will speak against that devil and tell that devil in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I have authority, I have authority, I have authority, I have authority. Be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Come out. 